In today's video, I'm going to talk about infrastructure as code. It allows us to define our cloud resources in C-sharp, configure them as needed, and define any relationships between our resources. Then we can deploy the entire configuration into the cloud and have our services up and running. I'll be using Amazon's Cloud Development Kit for the demo, so let's dive in. The AWS CDK, which is short for Cloud Development Kit, allows us to define and configure AWS resources in c -sharp code. Infrastructure as code is one of the best approaches of how you can configure your cloud resources. Configuring your resources manually is definitely useful if you are learning how to use AWS and many of its services, but once you are past the beginner level of understanding, you need something that's more repeatable and faster. Now, AWS, who is also the sponsor of today's video, has has a very popular solution called CloudFormation, which is also used by CDK behind the scenes, and how CloudFormation is different is it uses JSON or YAML configuration files to define your cloud resources. It's more mature compared to the CDK, it's stable, it has a large community and many examples, but it has a very steep learning curve, so Amazon developed the CDK. To give you a glimpse into what this might look like, here's an example CloudFormation file, which I actually generated using the CDK, but you can see just how complex this is and how well you need to know the structure to define a very simple set of resources. In this example, I'm defining an SQSQ and connecting it to an SNS topic using a subscription. Now, let's be real. Who really wants to write YAML or JSON for their cloud resources? I definitely don't. So Amazon also has the CDK, which is the Cloud Development Kit, and it has support for multiple languages like TypeScript, Java, and C Sharp, which is what I'm going to demo in today's video. So let's say you have a relatively complex deployment in the AWS Cloud, which consists of many of the common services like S3 for object storage, Amazon Cognito for access management, Amazon API Gateway, AWS Lambda, let's say you're using Amazon Aurora as a database, Amazon Event Bridge, or SQS for messaging, and imagine having to configure all of these services manually. You could definitely do it once, but being able to repeat this for however many development environments you have, and then multiply that by the number of microservices you have, assuming you have a microservices architecture, and things become a lot more complex. So this is where infrastructure as code comes in to solve this problem and allow you to define find a repeatable blueprint or template for your cloud resources, which you can easily deploy to your cloud of choice. Now, obviously in this demo, I'll be focusing on the AWS CDK and how to deploy these services into AWS. However, infrastructure as code is a very broad topic and there are many other providers which are cloud agnostic and allow you to define your infrastructure that you can deploy to many different cloud providers. If there is interest in this topic, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to cover this in a future video. So how do we get started with the AWS CDK? I'll move over to to the CLI and what you have to do to install the AWS CDK is install it as an npm package. So say npm install at the global flag and then you have to type in AWS CDK. Press enter and this will start installing the library and to confirm that the install was correct you can run CDK version and you can see I'm getting the version number back. So from here we can initialize a sample CDK application by saying CDK init app and then we'll specify the language of this application as C sharp. So I'll execute this and it's going to create a C sharp project with a solution in this folder and you can see some of the console logs from this operation. But essentially what we're getting is an Amazon CDK tutorial CS proj which just matches the name of the folder where I'm currently in. So if I open this project in Visual Studio this is what will be generated for us. So we have a solution with a single project inside and it contains a program file with an entry point method where we can define our application. Now what this actually does, it, it defines a so-called stack which represents your deployment stack and you also have an option to specify some stack properties where you can configure which AWS account and region you want to use for the deployment among other things. And it's going to synthesize your infrastructure and also allow you to deploy this into AWS. If we take a look at the csproj file itself, you can see that this targets .NET 8 and it has a couple of libraries installed. And the core concept that we have here is the constructs, which represents many of the popular AWS resources. Now, if I go into the Amazon CDK tutorial stack, this is where my deployment stack is actually defined. And here I can start defining my AWS resources. So let's start with the simplest possible example of a service that we'll most certainly use in AWS. And this is the Simple Storage Service or S3. So how you can get started with S3 is by creating a new bucket. The first argument is going to be this, the current object or the stack. The next thing we need 
is to give this component an ID. I'll leave the naming convention up to you. I'm going to define this as mjtech as free, and let's call this demo. And then we can pass in another object which represents the bucket properties. And this is what actually allows us to configure our S3 bucket. So among other things, I can configure the bucket name and note that this should be globally unique. So I have to make sure to specify something that probably isn't taken. And let's, for example, say mjtech as free demo and then I'll append bucket. I can configure many of the options that you've probably seen from the AWS console, like blocking public access. I'm going to say block all public access. And you can also configure the removal policy, which is what happens when you delete the stack using the CDK. By default, the S3 buckets will be orphaned. And let's say I don't want to have the default behavior. I'm going to say removal policy destroy. So this is all that's required to configure an AWS resource using the CDK. And you apply a similar approach to this to any of the other services. I'll show you what they look like in a moment but first let me demo how you can use this with the cdk so we're back in the console and the first thing you should do before trying to deploy your stack is making sure to call cdk bootstrap this is going to provision the default stack that cdk uses inside of cloud formation to configure the stack that we are defining in the code and it's going to provision some default resources let me jump into the aws console and from here i'll jump into cloud formation and if i go into stacks you can see that one stack already already exists. It's called the CDK Toolkit, and this is what gets provisioned when we run CDK Bootstrap. So you can see some details here, and among other things, you can take a look at the resources that are provisioned for this CloudFormation stack, and it contains some access policies and roles that are needed to provision AWS resources. So this is what you get after running CDK Bootstrap. Now let's go back to the console, and the next command you can run is CDK Synth. What this is going to do is it's going to build your project and generate the cloud formation template is going to be used to actually deploy your resources to AWS. So you can see the cloud formation template here and it contains our S3 bucket with the name that we assigned. It also contains our configuration values like block all public access and also the deletion policy that we defined. And then a couple of other options when it comes to the regions where this will be deployed. So after you run CDK synth, you can also check what is the difference between the current stack that you have defined in your code and what's present in the cloud. So if I run CDK diff, I can get the difference between what I have deployed and what I have defined in my code so that I can see what's actually going to happen when I run CDK deploy. So right now you can see we only have our bootstrap CDK and what's going to happen after deploying this is adding our S3 bucket. Now let's go back to the code. I want to make this example a bit more interesting and what we can do next after defining our bucket is adding another resource and you can also store the results of these operations into variables. So let's call this SQS Q1 and I'll initialize a new queue instance. This allows me to define an SQS queue and let's call this mjtech SQS demo and I'll say one. And then I want to pass in the queue properties. And here you can configure many of the popular options when it comes to setting up an SQS queue. For example, if you want this to be a FIFO queue, you can set the FIFO property to true. Now I'm not going to complicate this and I just want to set the queue name and I'll use a similar naming convention to what we use for the bucket. I'll say mjtech sqs demo and then queue. And let's call this the first queue. And I'm doing this because I also want to define a second queue. So I'll say new queue and then initialize this by passing in the current instance. Let's call this mjtech sqs demo two. And then we need to pass in a new queue property. Here I'm going to specify the queue name as mjtech sqs demo queue two. So now we have two queues. And I'm doing this because I also want to define a topic and then subscribe these queues to any messages published to that topic. To achieve this, we need a topic. And this is an abstraction that's coming from SNS, the Simple Notification Service. And you can initialize it by newing up a topic instance, passing in the ID, let's say SNS demo. And then we need to pass in a new instance of topic props. And here we can again configure what type of topic this is. If you want to use FIFO topics and FIFO queues, you can set FIFO to true. For now, I'm only going to set the topic name and let's call this mjtech sns demo topic to just keep following the naming convention that we already have. Now once I have the topic I can add a subscription and we need to pass in a new topic subscription instance. So I'll create a new topic subscription. An SQS subscription is one of the possible options but there's also an email subscription, a Firehope subscription, 
a Lambda subscription, an SMS subscription, but what we need is an SQS subscription. And here we want to pass in our queue. So let's say SQS queue one. And if you want to configure the subscription, you can also pass in an SQS subscription props. And here you can configure some things like the dead letter queue. And if you want this to be wrapped in an SNS envelope, I won't be using these values. I just want to pass in the queue to configure the subscription. And let's also configure the auto subscription by creating a new SQS subscription and passing in SQS Q2. So now our stack is becoming a bit more interesting. We have an S3 bucket for object storage. We have two SQS queues for sending messages. And then we have an SNS topic to simplify sending messages where we can publish a message to SNS and have it delivered to both of the queues because we define the respective subscription. So finally, let's see how to get this deployed. Back in the console, you can again run CDK synth to see what the CloudFormation template is going to look like. And finally, to deploy this into AWS, you have to run CDK deploy and I'm going to execute this command and it's going to build my CDK project, synthesize the CloudFormation template, and then it's going to slowly start deploying my resources. You may get prompted to confirm the resources that are going to be deployed. I'm just going to confirm this. This is about the SQS queues that will be created. And if we jump into CloudFormation for a moment, you can see that there is a new stack here called the Amazon CDK tutorial stack. This is the one that we are currently deploying from our C -sharp code. Back in the CLI, you can see that this is creating a couple of resources here's the SNS topic that was created successfully as well as our S3 bucket and the two SQS queues that we have and finally we get a message that the deployment was successful so if we go back to CloudFormation we can observe that our stack has been successfully created if we go into the resources we can observe what are all of the resources that we have so we have our S3 bucket the first and the second SQS queue the SNS topic and then we have some metadata for the cloud development kit now if I go into S3 I wait for all of the buckets to load here's the one that we created called MJTech S3 Demo Bucket. If I go into SQS, we can observe our two queues. So here they are as Demo Q1 and Demo Q2. And if I go into SNS and then head over to Topics, I can find our one topic. And I want to show you how we can publish a message here. So let's say I publish a message. I'm going to write this as a JSON and let's just say hello. And if I publish this from SNS, I expect it to be delivered to both of my queues. So if I go into SQS and I open, let's say the first queue, and then I say send and receive messages and I pull for messages, we should be able to see one message appear. And we can confirm that this is the same message by taking a look at the message contents. And you can see that it contains a JSON body where the message value is hello. What you're seeing here is the actual wrapper from SNS. This is also configurable if you want to use it or not. I'm going to stop polling here. And if I go back to the queue and then subscriptions, you can see that we have the one subscription that we configured from our code. And I really like how easy it is to get started with the CDK for .NET and start configuring pretty complex AWS deployments. And the benefit of this approach is you can easily run this inside of a CI CD pipeline. I already showed you that this actually uses an NPM package to run through the CLI. You can install this inside of your CI CD pipeline and then build and run your CDK project to deploy your resources. If you make any changes to your stack, this is also going to be applied when you deploy it. Let me demo what that looks like. So I'm back in my stack. And let's say I want to get rid of one of the queues and the respective subscriptions. So I'm just going to delete them from the CDK or better yet, I'm going to comment them so that they are left in the source code. And you can grab the source code completely for free from the pinned comment right below this video. So I've made just this change to my code. Now I'll jump into the console and here I'm going to say CDK diff. Now this is going to calculate what is the difference between the current stack that I have defined in my code and what is currently provisioned on AWS. And I'm hoping that the result of this is going to be that we need to delete the SQS queue. And you can see that this is the operation. It's colored in red to let you know that something will be removed. And we're going to remove the SQS queue, the queue policy, and the respective subscription. So let's say I'm happy with that. I'll clear the screen and then I'll say CDK deploy. And then this will proceed to deprovision the SQS queue that we previously had as part of the stack. So this is how you can add or remove resources and be aware that some resources by default are going to be left as orphaned unless you explicitly configure them to be destroyed like the S3 bucket, which I showed you at the start of this demo. So I'm going to let this complete and the result of this deployment will be the removal of the SQS queue. And after a few moments, you can see that our deployment was successful and we managed to deprovision 
and the SQS queue. If I jump into the AWS console, we can quickly confirm this by visiting our stack and then the respective resources, and you'll see that the second queue is no longer there. And also, if I go into SQS, you'll see that we have just one of the queues that we originally defined. Lastly, if you want to deprovision your entire stack, including the stack itself and any related resources, you can say CDK destroy, and this will proceed to deprovision everything you have defined in the stack. You'll be prompted if you are sure, I'll say yes, and then this is going to proceed to remove everything that I configured in my C-sharp code. And after a couple of moments, you can see that we've successfully managed to deprovision our CloudFormation stack, which means we deleted the stack itself, the S3 bucket, the remaining SQS queue, the queue policy, the SNS topic, and any subscriptions that we had defined between them. Now over to you, let me know in the comments what you think about infrastructure as code, and specifically the AWS CDK, also, let me know if you would like to see an example similar to this one, except we would be using Azure. If you want to sharpen your AI skills, take a look at this video next, where I'll show you how you can use S3 as a vector database and use it to implement semantic search. Make sure to smash the like button under this video so it gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, stay awesome.